we continue with factoring quadratics. Here, we consider special cases that are worth memorizing. First, we have difference of two squares. The type of quadratic I'm trying to identify here, there's no middle term. We have a minus sign in the middle, and then we have squares on the ends. So something like a squared x squared minus b squared. This will factor as ax plus b times ax minus b. To check, we FOIL this product. So the first gives me a squared x squared. The outside gives me ax times minus b. The inside gives me b times ax. And then for the last, we have minus b squared. So the outside and the inside cancel, leaving us with just two terms, a squared x squared minus b squared as promised. So when we're looking for a difference of two squares. We want no middle term. I want a minus sign, and then I want to identify squares on the ends. So for instance, if I had 25x squared minus 16, I could rewrite the first term as 5x quantity squared, second term as 4 squared. So using our rule, what I'll have is 5x plus 4, 5x minus 4. Of course, you should FOIL that to check your answer. Now, common situation, I'll have something like 75x squared minus 12y squared. Note, we're missing the middle term. Okay, here I have two variables, so that middle term would be x times y with a number. We have a minus sign, so it's starting to feel like a difference of two squares. The problem, 75 and 12 are not squares. Now here, we're lucky. We should always factor out the greatest common factor before we do any real factoring. So if I do that instead, note, we could factor a three out of each term which will leave me with 25x squared minus 4y squared. Now, difference of two squares applies. So here we'll have 5x quantity squared. Here I have 2y quantity squared. We apply our formula. So I'll have 5x plus 2y times 5x minus 2y. Of course, you should check your answer. So you just multiply everything out. Make sure you get back your original polynomial. Another special case. I could have something like x to the fourth power minus one. So if I have x to an even power, that's gonna be a square. So difference of two squares will apply. Only problem is when you start factoring, okay, when you have that even power, you have to worry about whether some of the powers that come out can be factored any further or not. So for instance, if I have x to the fourth power minus one, okay, this is gonna be x squared quantity squared. Okay, remember our rule for exponents. If I have x to the nth power, in parentheses raised to the nth power, that's x to the m times n. So this is gonna be x to the fourth power. We have that one to any power is one, so this is definitely equal to one squared. We apply our difference of two squares. I get x squared plus one times x squared minus one. Now, the x squared plus one, we'll see in a little bit, we can't factor that any further. For the x squared minus one note, here I have x squared, here I have one squared. So I can apply difference of two squares again. So that'll factor into x plus one times x minus one. So x to the fourth minus one is gonna factor down into these three factors. Next case, we have sum of squares. Here are quadratics in the form, a squared x squared plus b squared, where a and b are non-zero. This looks a lot like difference of two squares, but the situation's very different. So if I change this minus sign to a plus, the result becomes, if there's no greatest common factor, then this quadratic's prime, meaning we can't factor it any further. Now, this is a special case of more general result. We have cx squared plus d, where c and d are positive. If there's no greatest common factor, then that's a prime. Okay, note here, a squared, since it's not zero, is positive. B squared, because it's not zero, is also positive. So it's a special case of this. Now, to see this, okay, we assume there's no greatest common factor, and then we just assume that this factors into linears. Now, I don't actually care what the m's and n's are. We only care that they're non-zero, and we want to keep track of the signs. So let's see what happens. We assume we factor, okay, so I can FOIL to get this equation here, we match up the powers of x. So that gives me three equations. 
We have mm prime is equal to c, which is positive. So the m's are either both positive or both negative. And m prime is equal to d, which is positive. So again, either both positive or both negative. We have this third equation, since the x term is equal to zero, mn prime plus m prime n is equal to zero, or mn prime is equal to minus m prime n. Now, if I put these three equations together, okay, and try to reconcile them, I'll never be able to have a solution because the signs won't match up. So for instance, if I tried both m's positive, both n's negative, okay, let's go through this. m times n is gonna give me a negative. We have that equal to minus m prime n, which is minus a minus, which is a positive. Because the m's and n's are never zero, there's no way I can get these signs to line up. So I can never have a factorization like this. Of course, I leave it to you to check the other three cases. So that means when there's no greatest common factor, we're getting a prime. Examples, take x squared plus one. So ax is just equal to x, or b is equal to one. This is gonna be a prime. There's no greatest common factor. Take three x squared plus nine. This is not a prime because I could pull a three out of it. But once I pull that three out, we have x squared plus three. And that's a prime by the general result. Okay, we don't have squares, but still a prime. Now, you might be wondering, can we play the same game we play with difference of two squares? So can I use higher powers like fourth, sixth, eighth? Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So if I take x to the fourth power plus four, okay, we can think of that as x squared squared plus two squared. This is not gonna be prime, but it's not gonna break up in a way that's obvious unless you know the answer beforehand. So in this case, I can factor x to the fourth power plus four into two quadratics. Then you can work out the multiplication to show that the x to the fourth plus four comes out. All right, so that's a little bit of work. Not so worried about that. It's more just to show you a case where this breaks down with higher powers. So our result here definitely only applies to quadratics. Okay, so only powers of two. Now, this business of cx squared plus d We'll revisit later on, we talk about the quadratic equation. So there's an interesting story there. Now, if you did the calculation at the end of the previous board, you'll note that we had to work out x squared plus two quantity squared. The right way to do this is not to put the square in each term and be done. Okay, that would give us x to the fourth power plus four. Instead, I have to write x squared plus two times itself, and then I just apply FOIL. So I get x to the fourth power plus four x squared plus four. So I multiply something like this by itself. What comes out is gonna have not two terms, but three terms. Now, upshot here is, if I have x plus b quantity squared, don't be thrown off by the square. Okay, we're really needing to do a foil here. It's not gonna be equal to a squared x squared plus b squared. Okay, if there's no common factor here, this would be a prime then that would mean we can't factor it into a product of two other things. Now, this leads to our next special case, perfect square. So if I take ax plus b squared, okay, I write that multiplied by itself, we FOIL, we get a squared x squared plus two abx plus b squared. If I had ax minus b, same equation, except we change this plus to a minus. Okay, note minus b times minus b, it's gonna be plus b squared. So we only pick up the minus in the middle. Now, we wanna be able to identify these on site, so what do you do? You take your quadratic, you look at the terms on the ends. If they're squares, then you have a candidate for a perfect square. See if you do have one, you check the middle term. So if I have on the ends a squared x squared and b squared, I would take two times ax times b. If it matches, then you have a perfect square, you can apply your formula. Okay. Otherwise, you have to try a different method. Now, for examples, let's try 25x squared plus 60x plus 36. We look at the ends. We notice here I have 5x squared, here I have 6 squared. So this is a candidate. Check the middle. It's gonna take two times. Okay, here we have 5x, here we have 6. Does that match our middle term and our quadratic? So yes, it does. That means I have a perfect square. I can apply the formula. 
Okay, so it's gonna be 5x plus 6 quantity squared, or 5x plus 6 times itself. Another common situation, okay, here we'll use two variables, 45x squared minus 120xy plus 80y squared. We check the ends. We know we don't have squares in this case. 45 and 80 are not squares. But when I do factoring, we should always check first that we have a greatest common factor or not. So here we know that I can pull a 5 out of this. That leaves me with 9x squared minus 24xy plus 16y squared. I have squares on the ends. Okay, so here, this is 3x squared. This is 4y squared. We check the middle term. So I take two times, okay, we have 3x and a 4y. That gives me a 24xy, and we note here we have the minus sign, so I use the formula with the negative in it. So that means ax minus by in this case. So I have 3x minus 4y, 3x minus 4y, and then we have the 5 out in front. So we get 5 times 3x minus 4y squared. Let's put everything together in a checklist. If we're trying to factor a quadratic, first step, we try to factor out the greatest common factor. That can make our work much easier. Then, we see if what remains is one of our special cases. So we have difference of two squares. We have cx squared plus d, and it generalizes the sum of squares. And we have the perfect squares. If none of these apply, then we just move on to another method. So we have the AC method, we have trial and error, or what have you. If one of those works, we get a factorization. You can always check our work. So, you just FOIL your factors to make sure you get back your original polynomial. Now, let's run through one more example. So we'll use 20x squared plus 85x plus 20. First step, factor out greatest common factor if possible. Here, I could pull out a 5, leaving me with 4x squared plus 17x plus 4. Now, we note that the ends are squares. So here we have 2x squared. Here I have 2 squared. So we have a candidate for a perfect square. To check, we look at the middle term. So I'm asking, OK, we're going to take 2 times 2x times 2, which is 8x. Is that equal to 17x? No. So this is not a perfect square. Now, that doesn't mean that we're done. We just need to use another method. So here we'll use the AC method. So you should look at the previous video to review how that works. Now, for our coefficients, I have a equal to 4, b equal to 17, c equal to 4. So a times c is equal to 16. Okay, I have a positive. So that's going to mean the pattern is going to be plus plus or minus minus. To figure out which, we check the sign on b. Because b is equal to 17, it's going to be a plus plus. Now, we're going to take factorizations of ac, okay, factorizations of 16. See if we can get them to sum to 17. So we get our answer right off the bat. If I take 1 times 16, 1 plus 16 is equal to 17. That tells me how to split B. Now, our next step, we rewrite our quadratic. So it'll be 4x squared. Okay, I'm going to use the 1 plus 16 now. So that's going to be used as x plus 16x plus 4. We apply grouping. In the first pair, I can factor out an x. In the second pair, I can factor out a 4. What remains matches. So we have 4x plus 1 in each of these, which means grouping applies. So I factor out the 4x plus 1. I'm left with an x plus 4, and we have our answer. OK, note we have to put back in the greatest common factor of 5. That's our answer. And of course, we would check that by applying FOIL.